Huh. Scientific proof that God exists. Well, that sounds like an interesting discussion. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, your friendly neighborhood atheist here. The music you just heard was by Dnitrios, an ambient post-black metal one-man band off his album The Coldest Day of Winter. Since the video I'm responding to doesn't have any audio, I'm going to be playing another one of his compositions, Google Doesn't Care About Your Feelings, in the background of this video. The Bandcamp page is linked below where you can find both of those albums and a couple others as well. They are all available for free to download. The video I'm responding to today is one of the many Proof of God videos that crop up from time to time. This one is entitled Scientific Proof God Exists, The Fishbowl Experiment, and it's from a channel simply called ProofVid. So without further ado, let's check this video out. So it's an experiment. That's great, I like experiments. Fish tank? I thought you said it was a fish bowl. Anyway, go on. I, I don't see what this has to do with God. Haha, ha, move on. Again, fish bowl, fish tank, make up your mind. Wait and wait some more are really non specific directions. Just how much time do you want me to let pass? When you're actually writing up the methodology for a scientific experiment, you have to be very specific about the units involved. It's not just about half an hour, it's 36 minutes. I'm beginning to see where this is going. Okay, first of all, there will not be nothing in the fishbowl. Both the cover you used and the bowl itself will be sloughing off a few molecules every so often, and that will be non-negligible if you were to scientifically measure the contents of the fishbowl after a long enough period of time. That's not even considering what's in the air that sneaks into the bowl in spite of the lid, which I can only assume is not perfectly airtight. But let's put that aside. So what you've done, or what you think you've done anyway, is create a closed system, which you presumably consider analogous to the universe. I'm not sure what you were attempting to prove, that life cannot arise without intervention, or that mass and energy can't spontaneously arise from nothing. For the life thing, I would direct you to the Miller-Urey experiment and other actual experiments that have been conducted concerning abiogenesis. Your experiment with a fishbowl is completely inapplicable because it does not simulate anything close to the conditions on an early Earth. As for the mass and energy one, well, I'll direct you back to my point earlier about what's in your fishbowl not actually being nothing. You haven't actually created an example of nothing, because there are still things in the fishbowl that prevent it from containing a literal nothing. In fact, there is no way to create or study a literal nothing in this universe, because there are some things in this universe. The only way to study the properties of nothing is to look at the very, very, very small, like orders of magnitude smaller than subatomic particles small. What we find when we do that is incredibly counterintuitive. When you get down to that level, you suddenly start to see these ephemeral particles pop in and out of existence more or less continually. There are equations in quantum mechanics that govern this process, and as long as the particles are very short-lived, no rules of quantum physics are violated. Put another way, this means that very, very small amounts of stuff do actually come from nothing at all, all the time. There are still a lot of questions surrounding this area of study, but the most interesting research today is beginning to suggest that maybe this phenomena might actually be responsible for all the stuff we observe in the universe. I have, once again, linked Lawrence Krauss's lecture, A Universe from Nothing, in the description. But put all that aside. Pretend none of what I just said was true. 
That would still not be a proof of God, it would just be an argument from ignorance. What your argument boils down to is basically, there is stuff in the universe, stuff must come from somewhere, therefore God put it here. Or simplified even more, I don't know where the stuff in the universe came from, therefore God did it. I don't know, therefore I know, is a logical fallacy. Yeah, thanks, I, I, I do actually need a drink. And, well, that's it. It's a short video, so thanks for watching, I guess. This has been your Friendly Neighborhood Atheist, and until next time, best wishes!